Look at it. Jeff Gento Show that you are tuned into. Coming you live from the South Coast here in the uh, Commonwealth of Massachusetts, where it's going to be much colder this weekend. We've uh, been in very, very uh, warm temps for a good time. It's been, you know, chillier this week, but it's going to be, uh, as we say here in the Northeast, wicked cold. And uh, that is, of course, um, a losing elements of our of our um, people who have been here for a long, long time. A lot of people have come in from other parts of the country to live in Massachusetts. Uh, you know, we get Harvard and MIT here, so they settle here and they lose the accent, right? But uh, it's still here and it is still cold one way or the other. <laughs> Not as bad as Buffalo, though. Six feet of snow, my word. Well, a place where it rains a lot is where we're going next. Uh, up the Interstate 5 from California uh, to the great 206, where we find uh, our Renaissance man. He's a musician. He is an activist. He's a great uh, reporter, the executive director of Democracy Watch News. He is Mark Taylor Canfield, and he joins us live from Seattle. Hey there, Mark. How are you, my friend? <laughs> Oh yeah, it's a small guitar, man. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's a fine. It's my fine V. I like this one. It's got another trading musician beauty. I love those guys at trading musician. But hey, check this out. I have a pipa. This is actually a Chinese instrument. There are Japanese versions oh, as well. But it's very pretty amazing. Cool. It's uh, silk strings, so it sounds very soft and light when you play it. They're, they have many different sizes. This is a really small one. But it's one of those things you pick up at, literally in an antique store in Seattle because there's such an Asian influence here that you often see How sitars much would that or other cost, instruments. By the way. Excuse me? How much would that cost? This? Another yeah. collector's item. The only one I've ever seen. So uh, I bought it for relatively inexpensive because I think the people in the shop didn't know what it was. They'd never seen it people before. There was no one working ah. there from China or Japan who would know the, what this go. is. As you can see, you know, this inlay, it's really beautiful. It's very decorative yes, it too. Is. So, I mean, I almost am afraid to play it sometimes, but I, I think if you look online for these, you probably will find very few. And so I think a, uh probably the seller could ask for just about anything at this point well not anything wow. but you know what i mean the seller would be yeah, setting yeah. the price i wanted to tell you guys too i, I have to remember to do this because i get in trouble if i when i forget this but uh i wanted to i want to remind people because we always forget at the end of the show that we do have a song up at youtube it's a, a music video called mother freedom and it's dedicated yes. to people for freedom all over the world so in the music video, there are a lot of clips from news broadcasts from uh, from China, from uh, Nigeria, from Central and South America, from the Ukraine and Belarus and all sorts of places where people have been battling, you know, with their own governments um, just to hold on to basic rights. And as I was going through all, all of that footage, one of the things that really, I don't know, it, it, I was talking about this to one of the producers on the Tom Hartman show earlier today, but there is something going on where um, people around the world are dealing with a, a similar kind of fascism right now. And it's really sad to see that, you know, it kind of reminds me a little bit of what popped up in Europe uh, with Mussolini and Franco and Hitler. Yeah. So it's Hitler. really yeah. just to look around the world and see that. And, uh, you know, and so my, my heart goes out to people everywhere struggling for basic well, you know, things we got, in the we United got, you got some, Yeah, you got scenarios in, in France where Le Pen could take over easily enough. Uh, you know, you Brazil. worry about Germany. You know, uh, well, obviously Brazil, we just won, but you're right. Uh, that, that could obviously but flip both, again. Yeah, a very close race. former president was being like Trump. It's like part of their playbook is that we refuse to accept the results yeah. of the election. So we'll just hold on to yep. power no what. You get that in Arizona. We'll <laughs> Never mind in Brazil. <laughs> You know, yeah, with Miss Lake there, you know the phony uh, anchor woman there. Um, hey, I wanted to let you know because watch last night I was watching. It is such a hilarious movie, but it, it involves your one of your great professions uh, as a musician. Uh, Spinal Tap, you know, it goes to eleven. There are some amazing yeah. scenes in that movie 
which I think you could appreciate as a as a working musician. <laughs> they they were trying to play, I think, in Cleveland, and they couldn't find their way from the backstage to the front of the stage. And they were going down these these different corridors, and they got stuck in closets and stuff like that. And you know, Harry Shearer, yeah. who was of course well known for the Simpsons, was what I the bass guitarist. And uh, eventually, when they would get out there, they put them in these sort of like uh, bubbles and stuff, and they couldn't get the bubble to open up. Um, so they had to get a a, a a jack saw and other ways to get the, the, the thing to open up. Meanwhile, the other band members yes. uh, were already playing. <laughs> okay. It was too much. I have so. a, I, I can relate. I have a similar story. Sometimes truth is stranger okay. than fiction, right? So I'm on the main stage at the Hemp Fest Festival in Seattle, the, the largest cannabis festival in the world. Like there's 80,000 people coming through this event. And I'm on the main stage with my band. It's, we were called the Galaxy Machine and we had go-go dancers right. and the whole thing. And I'm playing keyboards actually at that point because I'm also a keyboard player. So I'm playing the keyboards and everything is going great. The crowd's loving us. You can see the sun going down over the uh, Olympic mountains to the west. It's just beautiful over Puget Sound. And all of a sudden, my keyboard just starts jumping up and down on the stage. Why? Because our bass player, who weighed about 280 pounds, was playing oh bass right next to me, just trying to try to walk out with me and jumping up and down. I didn't realize that the <laughs> keyboard platform had not been hammered down. And, you know, sorry, guys, <laughs> at the Hemp Fest, you know, it was a great crew, so I don't want to blame them. But someone forgot to basically attach the keyboard platform to the stage. So every time he jumped up and down, so would I, and the keyboard would go flying up in the air. So I'm trying to play this live while the keyboard <laughs> is flying up it. in the air. And, the and then finally I grab it, kind of like this one. I kind of grabbed it and right. like, I do went Jan Homer. It wasn't supposed to be played this way, but I just grabbed it like this. And I started playing it like that because, because I couldn't keep it on the stand. No and other I, way to, and the no way to keep love it him. going. Yeah. Dennis Martinez, great slap funk bass player, amazing guy, you know, owns his own business. He does custom kitchen cabinets for like three star, four star restaurants or whatever. But oh, he wow. didn't realize he was just Another trying to have fun man. and bring some energy to the show. And then he looks at me and I have this panic look on my face. He couldn't figure out what the problem was. And he sees the keyboard going up and down. I literally like caught it in midair and then kept playing it. So it was a rock and roll story. And the, those guys at Hempfest, they treated us all like rock stars. So I'm not going to blame them for anything. It was just one of those things that happened during a rock show. You don't expect yeah, it. Yeah, you don't yeah, know no, what's going to happen. Nobody to blame. Yeah. I mean, you know, even yeah, in, even in the know. Spinal Tap movie, I mean, there was, you know, they were all trying to do the right thing, but <laughs> it's just too much, oh, you know, to be time. Harry you, Shearer again, so, the bass guitarist was walking behind so stage and, 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 and he it's kept really saying, mangled. hello, Cleveland, but nobody could hear him. Oh, well, okay, there was a guy who came, I can't remember what band it was, I think it was Doc, and they were opening for Judas Priest at the Tacoma Dome, same place that Bernie Sanders had his big, huge event during the election a couple years ago. And so he's on stage and he says, it's so great being here in Seattle. And people start booing because he's not in Seattle. But you know, that's no, just Seattle, when you're on exactly. the road, after a while, every town looks the you same. You haven't slept much. You don't know what town you're in. Also, the drummer situation uh, is totally true. I haven't had one actually blow up on stage, but I did watch one pass out. And Keith Moon did that too on a famous video. You can find it at YouTube. But our drummer literally passed out in the middle of the show, fell backwards off the drum set. I thought he was dead, but he was okay. He just drank too much, right? And so yeah, they, they were I have doing this the whole, thing. Uh, empathy on, I have on a the drum drummer's last night. I designed from all this. I always need a drummer because Seattle's unofficial motto is need a drummer. So I have a big cage. You just drop it on him. You never let him out. You, you feed him like raw meat and Jack Daniels and, you know, that's all they need. And then, you know, they're good to go like, like a uh, animal in the Muppets. Yeah. They're all like that. Th those stereotypes are actually true in a lot of ways. Well, you that know, movie is uh, so this is a, I'm glad you brought it up. Uh, this is Great, on the great best talk show great. in the United States, folks, and I've done a lot of them. I've done Hardman's <laughs> show, and I was on with Dr. Cornell West and Tavis Smiley and their NPR show and a lot of other, a lot of the Air America shows. This one right here has the most intelligent guests and the most intelligent dialogue. Believe me, I know hey, what I'm talking man, about. Thank you. I appreciate that. And you've done, you've done a lot of great uh, shows, so I appreciate that because uh, you've been, you know, the other uh, competition. I appreciate those words, and you've been consistent with that, too. So the love goes right back to you, Mark. Um, you, what you do and, and, uh, all you do, uh, for the people of Seattle, you know, unheard of, 
really. I mean, you take it seriously. You understand your commitment to the community and uh, whether it's, again, your activism or the work at Democracy Watch News or the fact that you understand how a role of musicians play uh, in that community and how it influences young people. And that's where I want to go next. The youth, the youth vote is so incredibly important to the future of the democracy. If, if they stay home, as some of them did around the country, um, you know, thankfully, the majority of them that did come out voted Democrat in huge numbers, or as Bernie would say, huge numbers. Um, yeah. But you're going to need a lot more than that going forward. And you're going to have to start talking about climate change, about uh, increase the minimum <laughs> wage. Uh, you're going to have to start talking about, you know, um, continuing to, to break the glass ceiling. I always talk about, you know, make 35K a year is the average individual salary in America. And it's 67,000 is the household income. Well, why is it 67,000? Well, because of the fact, not 70, which would be the addition, 35 and 35, right? Because women don't make as much as men. So, you know, that's another piece. So if you're a 21-year-old college graduate from, you know, Harvard or Yale or some state college, which we should make it for free, you know, you're going you're gonna to want to be able to make the same as your male counterpart. So, you know, all those things have to be in consideration. But, but I think, you know, you, you have uh, talked about this before. And again, so much starts in Seattle and so many young people. I mean, that Bernie Sanders crowd that you were at, that, you know, you have a, a photograph of that you talked to us about and showed us, I think, too, in the first row. I mean, you know, you look at that crowd and it's 90 percent people under the age of 30. And, and that is a credit to the people of Seattle, the, the young people, the people who connect themselves to music, you know, to what you do, to what, uh, you know, the, the whole great Seattle sound from the 90s that's still there, the Nirvana sound, the Pearl Jam, our friends from the Foo Fighters and so on. By the way, I saw this and talk about, you know, how the connection to athletes uh, there's a, a hockey goaltender by the name of uh, Carter Hart. He's a goalie for the Eagles. And he has on his helmet, you know, the NHL goalies have the big helmets. Um, the drummer who just passed away from the Foo Fighters and Dave Grohl on his helmet. It's very cool. And uh, I know you would appreciate that, um, you know, being in the, in the music world. And I know that you've become a, a bigger hockey fan now. The Kraken plays uh, there in Seattle. So, you know. Just some uh, hey. points, but talk to us about the the young uh, the young vote. Speaking of drummers, Alan White passed away recently too. The former drummer for the Plastic Ono Band and John Lennon and the band Yes. He lived in Seattle and he he would just show up at clubs and and perform sometimes. It was really great. Uh, somewhere that Plastic Ono Band drum set disappeared, by the way, too. So if anybody finds it, oh, I'll give right? them a finder's fee. Yeah, hmm. but. Uh, I have great examples in Seattle to follow. People like Eddie Vedder and Pearl Jam who've taken on Ticketmaster and raised millions of dollars for uh, uh, a program to try to end homelessness in Seattle. Um, uh, well, Eva Walker, you know, with the Black Tones who just got back from a, a major tour and then presented an award to Sir Mix-a-Lot on Sir Mix-a-Lot Day because our, our mayor and the uh, King County Executive Dow Constantine declared Sir Mix-a-Lot Day, but she has also done a lot for the community, a lot of benefits, her and the Black Tones, that band has played, you know, uh, house parties for homeless shelters, and you name it, they've been out there, you know, giving of themselves to the community, so it's a great example, all the musicians who came together to save the Showbox Theater here, actually across the country and across the world, more than 150 artists and bands came together to try to save that place, you know, th those are great examples, so I have great examples to follow. As far as the young folks, which is um, basically, you know, during the, the protests against Trump and the Black Lives Matter protests, it was the young folks that were out there. They're the most politically active. They're very politically aware. And as I don't know who it was that said this on your program just the other day, but it is true that as I went around interviewing and filming uh, protests uh, organized by young college students and high school students, and in some case, even um, elementary school students, middle school students, they were all quite uh, progressive and actually leftists in a lot of ways. I mean, some of them pulled no punches and said, we are socialists. And they said that's one reason why they weren't getting a lot of support 
from say other members of the city council except for uh, Shama Sawant. I asked them, you know, well, why are, are, you know, they said they had invited other city councils to their rallies and they hadn't shown up. And these mm -hmm. were anti-Trump rallies. They were trying to alert people to the dangers of fascism, right, after his election. So it is true that the young folks in Seattle and I believe across the country are much closer aligned to a Greta Thunberg type uh, figure than anybody, you know, currently in the U.S. government, except for maybe Pramila Jayapal and a, a few others, AOC and a few others. But they are far to the left in comparison to somebody like Joe Biden and just, you know, and outright, you know, way to the left of anybody in the Republican Party. I mean, they don't they don't get it. They don't understand why all these old folks keep standing in the way, just like that song by Bob Dylan, a time's got to change, you know, don't stand in the mm -hmm. hallway, don't block up, you know, it's like time for, um, you know, folks like uh, Nancy Pelosi to step aside and bring some younger people in. I'm not sure the choice that the Democrats are going to make is going to be the best one. But I think yeah. the young people, yeah, you may, may show somebody up. who's 52, but you know, acts like uh, somebody who's uh, 82. Uh, so, you well, know, the, the exactly. fact is, the fact is, is that only 20% of folks in that very young age group actually voted during these midterms. And that's a shame because in Washington state, it was a 72% turnout. So imagine if 72% of the young people showed up, which is still, you know, leaves a one third of them out there not voting, which, you know, you can expect the apathy, especially when they see all this corruption in our election system. Mm -hmm. So, you know, imagine if the young folks voted, they are so much closer aligned to the progressive caucus in the United States Congress than any of the rest of the country. They uh, are wanting to move things ahead quickly on climate change. They would totally support national health care. Uh, free uh, college education, uh, raising the minimum wage, because a lot of them are working minimum wage jobs, even to try to put themselves through school. I know I did. So, you know, they're right there with the progressives in the Democratic Party. The progressive wing it, is speaking for them. So I think that the Democrats better uh, get a clue. And if they want to get any kind of a majority and to, and also to address something that came up earlier on your show, um, the state legislatures in Washington, Oregon, and California have held dem democratic majorities. And in California, in at least one house yep. in the assembly, they're working on a super, super majority. We also have uh, Democrat governors in all three states. But a lot of those young folks still feel like the neoliberals in the Democratic Party aren't really speaking to them. And so they're seeking alternatives. But I think if the Democrats did start to speak to them, and if you had uh, really uh, intelligent and uh, musicians with a great reputation out there speaking to them about um, some of the Democratic Party candidates and the platform issues that the Democrats are pushing, I think that you would get a great response. And that is the future of the Democratic Party if they want the majority. Now, if they want to just stay one of the in this polarized state as one of the two corporate parties, then, you know, they can ignore the young folks. But sooner or later, those kids are either going to get out in the streets or vote or both and the Democrats are going to have to reckon with them. So in Washington state, I think the folks like Patty Murray realized that during this last election, uh, they had to go to a progressive uh, message in order to get her reelected. And so, yes, there are Republicans in Oregon, California and Washington. Yes, the country is still divided. And so is Washington, Oregon and California in terms of rural versus city. The cities are overwhelmingly Democratic and progressive. The, the rural areas are much more right leaning and, and Republican. So geographically, yeah, I want, I want to tell you something. And, and you know, again, I, this, this is already past tense. But if AOC, who's 33, was still uh, unmarried, I mean, I think she's a, a very attractive woman in, in the many ways. I would have loved to have seen her, you know, marry somebody like a, an Eddie Vedder, because you would think a political person married to a musician it would be a great combination. All right. That's being set aside. I would love to see, and I'm, I'm asking you as somebody who has seen Bernie, you know, um, sell out places. I think that AOC being part of that millennial generation or generation Z, I don't know if it goes to 29 or whatever, whatever, however, they, these are all really artificial deals anyways. You know, it stops at 64, ends at, at uh, you know, 2010, whatever. But I think someone like AOC, who was a bartender, by the way, as we, we all may not remember, you know, I, I would love to see her go to a place like Seattle and she can go all the way down the coast, go to Portland, go to LA, go to San Francisco and talk about these issues because now you have somebody a, who was a bartender 
B, who is in the age group, C, who is very articulate and can talk about these issues, whether we're talking, you know, student loans, whether we're talking about public university to go to school for free. I remember going to New Hampshire at a Bernie event and I ran into somebody who was a stripper. And, and I said, well, you know, uh, you're involved in politics. Well, give me an excuse. Well, there are money here because we, you know, we don't have make enough money. So I have to go out and do this. And I'm not, not happy about it. I'm kind of embarrassed, but you know, that's what I got to do to make some extra money. So I think that she would be perfect. And I'm just wondering, not that I have the resources to, you know, to set this up or the ability to call AOC. Hey, get out there, talk to MTC. But I think that your city is a great launching pad. Again, I mentioned it earlier, Seattle and SeaTac minimum wage, along with Colorado, marijuana legalization. And all the things that Seattle has done and the state of Washington has done over the years, environmental leadership with Inslee. I don't know. How do you feel about that? we got a couple of minutes here or so. Well, Seattle is such a newsworthy town. Every time that Jeff Bezos or Bill Gates sneezes, it's a national That's news right. story. So and, and Schilt. We were talking about Starbucks earlier. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And there's whatever national issue, it always stems back to Seattle in some way. And uh, I think uh, the youth vote here is very powerful. I worry sometimes that the Democrats maybe pay more attention to their more wealthy donors because that's the only disadvantage of having a young voter, yep. uh, a young supporters is they don't have much money because they haven't had a chance to become economically viable. But Jeff, you know, that's something that comes up over and over in your show too with John Shelton and Alan Minsky and Professor uh, Kay is that economic security has got to become a number one that's issue. It's got to be considered by, as, by Democrats and people who support them are progressives as just as important as voting rights, just as important as reproductive rights, just as important of, as free speech and freedom of religion. You, we need Absolutely. to have the right to and you can link economic in this country. And that's what Here, here's uh, something. FDR, I, I think this is something that, you know, people who are 25 or people who are, are 65 can understand. If you use the, the video image of a hand taken away somebody's voting rights, somebody's uh, reproductive rights, uh, somebody's social security, regardless of age, they know it and they see that hand taken it away and it's a Republican hand. And Democrats should run that ad, and run that ad, and run that ad every week if they have to. Because that's who the Republicans are. They want it all for themselves. They're greedy. They all you want. Uh, they're the money for the one percent because they're getting the money from the one percent, and they should tag them that way. And if they don't, well, the Democrats will continue to be a minority party in many ways and won't have the influence that they rightfully should. And underlying all this is the fact that out of the twenty percent that voted in the midterm elections, uh, young folks, sixty-three percent voted Democrat. That's all you need to know. There you go. Yeah, I mean, you the know, when the when the grandma. Democrats are desperate. They, they know where to go, and that's the young people. Uh, and obviously, you know, they, they know that there are other, other places to go. They could have done more on Social Security. Our good friend Mark in California always tells us, you know, Social Security, if we would have done that, you know, we might have had, we might not have been on the downside. I think 10% more people age over 65 and over vote a Republican. There's no reason with Scott saying it right out loud. We're going to privatize yeah. Social Security and Medicare, but yet we lose it. Hey, man, yeah, have Republican yourself a good weekend. For being in society. I think the Democrats want everybody to have an equal opportunity. That's all. So, yeah. That's right. Thanks, Jeff. You guys hey, happy Thanksgiving, man. Always a pleasure. Rock on. Always a pleasure. You're the best. Happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy the dessert. Hey, uh, folks. Uh, time for me to go. I want to thank uh, Freddie Santori for broadcasting, uh, producing this broadcast, all the other great team uh, this past week, and Josh and Dan. Keep on fighting peacefully. Have yourself a wonderful weekend, folks, back on Monday. Short week next week. Until then, my name is Jeff Santos, and it's my time, my turn, to say I gotta go.